Welcome back, everybody. Seat Story Cup 5. Hope you guys have been enjoying the first group of the day so far. It's time for our elimination match here in Group E. It's Gar versus Chucky. Uh, I'm joined by uh, three lovely gentlemen. We have Super JJ, uh, the previous champion of Seat Story Cup. We have current reigning EU champion, Tice. And then freshly just out of his group in Group E, it's uh, Life Coach, who got first place in this group. Feeling high on the clouds. I was listening to the interview. Seems like you're in good spirits. Uh, so who do you think uh, will be eliminated here? We'll start off with Life Coach. Between uh, Gar and Chaki, you've seen both their line, uh, lineups. What do you think? Hmm, it's interesting, right? I mean, Gara is rather playing the control, uh, not conservative stuff, and Ch Chucky, on the other hand, is just playing the pure agro, non-conservative stuff. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess we can also flip coins here. <laughs> uh, seems like it. I mean, I, from what I was told, I think the Freeze Mage was banned. And then uh, Chucky, of course, sticking with his normal strategy of banning Warrior. But that's, that's kind of interesting when uh, Freeze Mage, being the unusual deck, draws the ban. But I don't. I don't. Uh, I it makes some sense if you know your best deck against freeze mage will be banned, and you don't have that much left. And it makes some sense if it's a greedy lineup, and with Nazar Druid. Oh. Druid is not that good against it either. Seems hey. to also. Hey, seems to be a popular deck in Tempo Stone there, right? Gar. Oh, Creeper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gar. Gar is a genius. The best deck. So, ah, he's playing the same list. Okay. So how did? Yeah. Well, how did it? Like, how did you get to this? All right, okay, then? well, I mean, I, Gara was my main practice partner in Temple Storm for the event. Um, you know, if, obviously, I, I said that, like, Eloise and Sand helped me out conversationally, but, I mean, Gara was the one that I practiced a lot of games with. And he was just, he was searching for a, a, a fourth deck, and he didn't know what to play. He really wanted to play Priest. And so we're like, okay, let's try it. And uh, Priest <laughs> let's lost, try. Think, lost 21 games in a row, and then he quit. <laughs> we actually grinded every single matchup at least three times, and then I beat him every single time. So he's like, all right, I guess I won't bring Priest. I was like, hey, man, what about the Shaman? Then I'm thinking about bringing it. And he's like, ah, oh, maybe. And then I didn't hear the rest of it. So maybe he actually ended up deciding to bring it on his own. And then now we're here. Now he actually brought it, so I'm super happy for him. Did he play it before or did it uh, get banned? Um. Uh... It took the ban. It got banned. It got banned. took the ban, right? The so we're actually just going to see a free O here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, against Zoo, I, I, this is one of the decks that I, I like it against. Uh, I like Zoo and I like Token Druid. And Chalky, yeah. does he have either of them? Yeah, he has the Zoo and he doesn't, he has, doesn't have Druid, though. He's got Warrior and Shaman remaining. Is he as good as Yuvo? Like, turn four uh, Earth Elemental into <laughs> Ancestral Spirits? I am really scared against Shamans uh, with this deck. And I know it's supposed to kill, uh, you know, other aggressive Shamans, mm -hmm. but... I, I even in some testing matchups, I still lost just because aggro shaman starts off and you just can't stop it. And yeah, with the seven seven stuff, sure. Yeah. Overload can really hurt you, I think, in that matchup. Yeah. But I really don't know about this book, but do you know that he lures you into the action? By the way, it's like it's like two minions. There's one small one. Yeah. And then why? Oh, okay, you already. Yeah. Okay, okay. Actually, you know, a, a, a of course, right. <laughs> A Bog Creeper is an uprooted Fen Creeper. Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah. You, you know the Fen Creeper? Right, right, right. Uh, He's doing the same. He's also tricking you yeah, into exactly. going on the island, and then you get eaten. Yeah, and I love it because uh, the golden card animation is really good. So I said if I had to play only one golden you card. You had golden ones, right? I know, yeah, I did. Uh, I had one golden and one non-golden, and I was like, Ugh. That doesn't work. I don't want to be a pleb. Life Coach would scold me for not having golden ones. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if it's Bog Creeper, of course you have to craft him. <laughs> This one's Cairn, he's Golden Cairn, so that one might be the MVP card. Oh, he looks pretty good. Yeah. So that Doomsayer, will there actually be an answer? I don't think so, right? Not unless he has Crazed Alchemist. That was one thing. Oh, that it doesn't play. Right. Could just go for uh, Doomsayer. Oh, wow. Wow. Farsighting the Farsight. Yeah, sure. Is that actually a planar deck, uh, like Doomsayer, Ancestral Spirit? It actually sometimes yep. is. No, it is. Because that is pretty crazy. If huh? you Doomsayer yeah. and Ancestral Spirit, what happens is... Not only will the first one pop, but the second one buys you an extra turn, uh -huh. so that you have turn five Doomseer, which sets up to a clean Cairn. That's crazy. Red is actually yeah. crazy. Mm -hmm. It's actually a turn, legitimate turn four play. If, I think Elemental Destruction has to be one of the best cards to actually discard with Farsight, because we've got a Hala Seal or something. Yeah. Shit is happening. You can even combine it then with a like, six drop if you don't yeah. really get something, or you just can get off the, rid of the Overload really easily with a Lava Shock whenever you want. I am actually mm. pretty impressed by this Ancestral Spirit. It is good. Thing. Like, I was also trying it. I didn't have the balls to bring it. I kind of yeah. regret it now. <laughs> but I was, I, it was the deck I played the most on stream, the most. And it is so good against Zoo. Like, it's just, just so good against Zoo. And it's hard to say, man. There's not that many decks that are that good against Zoo and not completely mm -hmm. terrible against everything else, like Freeze Mage. 
you, yeah. he comes up. The, the, the um, beautiful thing is kind of like, even if you have the seven attack minion, you have to split it up into two bodies. It right. makes it even harder. Yeah, it's uh, not clean to kill off this Doomsayer at all. Let's see. Uh, and Can the problem is, even if you kill it off, there is another one. So, But if you don't kill it off, yeah, then the next turn there is the other one. You just give him a free turn. That's pretty so. crazy. So we basically will see the return of Rogue if this deck ever gets popular. Yeah, Rogue. I mean, there's, there's definitely a handful of decks that are good against this. Um, Rogue being one of them. Hunter also being another one. Mm -hmm. so, Zap. Yeah. Uh, I was also... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Zap and Zap. Hex. Even mid-range hunters, uh, mid-range shaman is also really problematic. But yeah, like with hex. the hexes, it was every time you're scared to not like play your ancestral spirit, but it never pays off. Is he actually not gonna? Oh, what? Whoa, 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 whoa! He could have maybe killed it with like a dark tether double soul fire. Right? I mean, now there's just another doomsday. Right, right, right. Yeah, and, and this kind of gives him that extra turn. Yeah, that's true. Which uh, is pretty scary because then you're giving him another free development. Yeah, like Sue with two turns of out initiative <laughs> is pretty bad. Oh, another Buck Creeper. Oh, wow. Oh, he's that's playing good. That's really pretty nice brave. I, and, I, and I really like that because he's got so many big taunts that he just needs to have the first Cairn get initiative. Mm -hmm. It is important for him that this Doomsayer goes off. If the Doomsayer right. doesn't go off, he has to play from behind. So. Yeah, that's true. Also, uh, in, in case he does actually remove that Doomsayer, then he's like really far behind Cairn. It's really weak. If like, Because this is the term turn where like he really needs to get a commanding lead on the board yeah as soon he has the can on the board he should get actually a super good value out of it and just follow up with taunts with it yeah. and even if get, oh, man. i mean if things get out of hand he just drops the elemental destruction is fine it's so funny man when you play against zoo they have more cards than you very often because yeah. of how often <laughs> this is happening they're live tapping like they're like playing handlock man yeah. they're live tapping every turn Man, if you face that that, Karen, oh it's just my God. getting out of control. That's yeah, crazy. like the next turn, you're like just playing Ancestral Spirit on and, a Karen, and like the it's the dream, and you faceless it. <laughs> oh my God, there is yeah. like, it's so gonna sick. be a full board full of Karens in no, you're right. two, three turns. That was the moment when I knew. Uh, you know, everyone, every man has his moment when he looks upon the eyes of a woman and just knows that she's the one. Life coach, of course, <laughs> understands. Happy, happy family. That was me and the moment I played uh, uh, Ancestral Spirit and faces on a Karen. I was like, oh, that's, this is the deck. I'm bringing it. I just knew immediately. Uh, yeah. I messaged my boys, I'm like, Gar, I'm bringing this deck. And Gar's like, alright. <laughs> so much value. Can life coach even handle that? It's so much value. Oh, that's sick. Can you? That is really <laughs> sick. Like, you know, it is a really good deck. Just look at the freaking hand that they're like four cans and like 14 heal and another two bog creepers, yeah? yeah. Like, but the four Karens are also gonna still uh, uh, like spam an like another four or five. Like, there will be a four or five and a four or five. Yeah. It's actually, yeah, yeah, it's, insane. Like, it's insane, yeah. Well, like I mean, four kins and four banes. Yeah. Like, can you make a case for Jockey to try just like, no, there's no way, like to kill I'll his just opponent. kill it and give him another carry. No, I meant like <laughs> try to rush him down, but uh, I don't know if you can. I think there is no way. Six, uh, like, 10, 12. Yeah, nah, there's no way. He has a lot of damage in his hand. Mm. So, what was like, of course, you have played this match, but like, what were the outs that the zoo had to still like sneak the win in, into this matchup? Is it just. Be aggressive, hope for no AoE because there are like four AoE cards. Um, I mean, I actually haven't played, I haven't actually lost a, a game against Zoo with this deck yet, and I've played against it like seven or eight times in practice. So, so it just wasn't like one of those things where like I ever felt like they could win. Um, one of them is like you don't have removal for like Sea Giant, and others if they're playing like super aggressive and they actually kill you because you're playing too like slow on the board. Um, so, for example, if you have Cairns, they just rush past you with like Leroy power overwhelming stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's why you run Buck Buck Reapers. Right, oh. Exactly. Uh, but that was whoa, whoa, whoa. What, what well, that was that was not good, right? He could have elemental destructed for four opposing and only two of his, and instead he made three three. That cannot be that or I got You mean be before you did anything, far before yeah. any attack. And yeah, then you also have to storm correct, but I mean, who cares, right? Oh, I mean, <laughs> who cares? It's over. <laughs> I mean, despite no, but, but all it's this, so, it's so much better, right? Yeah, it's true. It's true. Yeah. I mean, what can Sue do here? Like, you're F. Yeah. Uh, the, the one mana death ring from Peddler. Yeah, I mean, there's also like ways, like if, if you have crazed alchemist in your deck tech and you, your mm -hmm. doomsayer doesn't go off, it's actually kind of a blowout sometimes. The, yeah, yeah, I mean, sure. this matchup is extremely one-sided one way or the other. It's either Zoo just overruns you and there's not even a chance, or you just like lock the game out and they might as well have conceded six turns ago. 
Yeah, yeah. not so often you're gonna lose this one against the zoo. <laughs> Feels Shield beautiful. Himself. This yeah. deck is actually kind of interesting. <laughs> yeah, it really is, man. Love no, I, I like it. Like it, it's cool to see something different. Yeah, as well, and the right? cool is like it's so good against aggro. Like it's it just beats the aggro decks. Mm. Yeah. Still not like the Bok Reaper is still so interesting for me. That is still like <laughs> the interesting card. I'm like, do you really need to play that one in the deck? I mean, the the replacements for Bok Creeper, if you're not going to play them, um, was originally Chomol and Nazoth. Um and then you would have these minions that would come back like. Chomon and Cairn, but then Cairn would come back so many times that you just overwhelm them. So there was there was either that or the Bog Creepers, but I felt like Bog Creepers were just more consistent. So just another Bog Creeper, we got this. Well, uh, was it correct, by the way, not to use the Soul Fire on the dude and rather deal six to the face? Like instead of the six five death threat, he could have also sent it to the face and and just Soul just Fire. Russia. Yeah. Nah, yeah, that pressure, pressure, yeah, it called it being like a little bit more pressure there then. Oh. And so the Wow, meditation. not even close, like not even yeah. exciting. It's just like so overwhelming. Yeah. Just really crush it. And yeah. I mean, that's that's kind of what uh, Gara was looking for. When you're playing this deck, you just really want to never lose to Druid, and Zood and, and those kinds of clubs. Yeah, and Druid is still a bit tricky, right? I mean, the, the way you win it, like Druid has just no access to good removal cards, so they cannot deal with a 7-8 taunt or even a 7-7. Seven, seven. Um, so I can really see that, but it's still like they can also go their way, and overloading might hurt you a little. Yeah, and the, you know, the Druid is definitely have a hard time dealing with Ancestral Spirit, but uh, they, they also can do the zoo approach of just putting so many minions on board and just Savage Orc gets past one taunt. So. You kind of, in that matchup specifically, I've really find that uh, Farsight is a really MVP card. Like, you need to get, like, a good Farsight early in the game. You don't have any proactive play at turn two, three. The Doomsday is not even that yeah. strong at that point. I wouldn't even mind keeping Ancestral Spirit because of mm. how important it is against, like, so many of the taunts, mm. too. So if you can just land that one Ancestral Spirit, and, and yeah, like you said, far like far side. Actually, the two games that I won as Druid, I just literally just far side into the perfect ancestral mm -hmm. spirit target. Like every time, it was Earth Elemental yeah. for two, or ancestral spirit for zero, and I got the Earth Elemental every time. Man, this matchup can be tricky. Though. Every time Doomsday, right? The Doomsday is really important here. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, do we even keep the far side one? Yeah, sure. I mean, you have a turn three play. Even wow. if you don't get a good, like, you still get an other card that's just three cheaper. It's like just so. a rocket start. If you get a Doomsayers and then the far side follow up, it's so good. Yeah, Doomsayer. That is, uh... That's really hard to come back from. Do you, do you keep Tuscar? Uh, for, for Jockey? Yeah. I mean, it's a 6-6 six, six for free mana, right? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, if, you, if you know the show, then. <laughs> Against me, it's always mana tight. I don't know about yeah, you. It's so crazy. <laughs> and you can never handle it. I keep mana tight totem? It's like Murphy's yeah. Law. <laughs> I yeah. agree. <laughs> All right, Coin Doomsayer. Chucky, not happy to see that. And he's forced to pass. That's not good. Really fast are uh, aggressive because if there, if there is like a totem golem, there still needs to be the answer with the flame totem or a one mana spell. Yeah, but if he has the answer, you just never get to use the second doomsayer. So I kind of yeah, liked it. Yeah, I liked it too. Like the other doomsayer is basically just dead in your hand if he has the answer. So we might as well just go for the proactive play and follow up with far side and then win. Is it as obvious as Doomsayer in this turn? Mm, no. That that turn is not that obvious. I don't I don't mind hero power. Oh, here, yeah, here I wouldn't do it. Why why should you? He doesn't even mm. have some board. Because he's gonna be far sighting next turn, so then how do you get this Doomsayer to go off again? I mean, you can also decide. Maybe Doomsayer turn four. Next turn. Oh, yeah, Tonto is also <laughs> really sweet. Oh there you go. There we go. <laughs> yeah. I mean from Chucky's side, probably just Tuscar into seven seven for four mana. That seems good. I mean, the Taunt Totem really does such a big work. Yeah, yeah, sure. It's really good. Uh, never lucky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is this... Okay. That's good, yeah? Yeah, that's fine if you're going to try to disrupt yeah. your opponent's turns. This turn for 7-7. Seven, you, seven. you don't mind to play off-curve often yeah. with this deck. Like, the power that the Doomsday grades here that it won't do next turn is pretty big here. You actually can't deal with him. Yeah. <laughs> no, but what, what will be a way to deal with it? Like, it had to be, like, Flame Totem with an... One mana spell. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. even if it happens, you're not too bad because he it's used to spell. It's a taunt totem. It's super huge here. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, he has one too now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we have matching taunt totems. Oh, this this um, Doomsday and then Chester Spirit, you don't, you never do this in this matchup, or because. Against Aggro Shaman, you always do it whenever you can. Yeah. Because you know that there is no Hex. If you have the fear of an Hex, it gets a bit tricky. You know, I mean, that would have been also a plan, like Farsight and then like the Doomsayer into the Inchester Oh, you mean that way, on yeah. the Doomsayer. Yeah. Um, or is it complete nonsense? It is not complete nonsense, but I think the spot here is pretty good. And um, you just want to develop one of your minions and then just copy it. All right. I think it's just oh. like more of a how much of a commanding... Mm -hmm. Position you are if you land. As if a you if you face like three it. minions on the board and right. you know the Doomsday will most likely die and with one extra card, you will, you would like to ancestral spirit it to make sure the Doomsday goes off. At this spot, the Doomsday really will likely go off. Yeah, right, right, right. After you play the Earth Elemental, you don't really have many plays, so he's gonna really want I mean, to be able to land. It's off. kind of fortunate here because he overloads himself so much, like even over the. The barrier that he just gets actually extra mana. He can just elemental okay. destruction here oh, yeah. and then earth element. So it's pretty sweet. Like, do you like it? Just not. No, no, I like to go for both for sure. Yeah, I like oh, it. Yeah. So. yeah, I was kind of feeling both because, like you said, um, the the mana doesn't carry over after that point. So um, he just spends, he just passes next turn, but he's got a free 70 on board. Yeah. Like now, next turn actually might be just a pass and in a good situation, hex. Yeah, he might actually f fall behind now for it this put on. Also, trades. Just onto the board here. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe maybe his plan is like to stabilize next turn with, let's say, hex and something, and then do the power turn the turn after with elemental destruction uh, yeah, into yeah, yeah. earth elemental and uh, recall mm. aspirate. Yeah, I can also see that. Makes yeah. sense. It's really true. Um, yeah. I mean, now the shaman's starting to fight back, and this is the point where it always gets really scary. <laughs> Where he actually like, goes face yeah, mark. They start, they start getting through. Yeah, and and you're yeah, overloaded. Yeah, yeah. And this is what I'm always really afraid of. One of the really big cards also for the... But there's a problematic card for the Shaman to face is like a Doom Hammer. Because there's like no weapon removal, it's just 16 damage. Yep. And can really, get really get oh, problematic. Really got the Bok Creepers. So really good. Line. Yeah. <laughs> really good staggering <laughs> here from Chucky. Chucky's like adapted to the situation really well. I think two Doomsayers, and it's really hard to come back from if your opponent's playing a I mean, you, now yeah. you simply do it, right? Yeah. yeah. Do the super power turn, just... I mean, you can also maybe... Is the Stormcrack maybe bad, better because the Silent Seven almost contests the first half? Yeah, the Stormcrack are better than what? Stormcrack Elemental Destruction uh, and the Earth Elemental. Yeah. Uh-huh. I don't think you go Spirit. Like, the Elemental Destruction on its yep. own is just weak. It only kills the Totem Golem. Kind of with some zero one zero twos. So alone, the elemental destruction don't seems too appealing for me. I mean, so. you, you just drop the minions. Hey, yeah, also in a nice way, you still have two mana the next turn for ancestral spirit. Yeah, like if you combine it, then it's uh, then it's nice with the stormcrack. But if you don't want to combine it with uh, oh wait, never mind, earth element. I forgot to get earth element. Yeah, 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 it's, we'll it's uh, yeah, just that's so much over. I don't know, like you basically. No, no, I, really, like the, I, uh, I like the strong creature. Also, yeah. get more value because it overloads you more, so that will yeah. not happen in the. I think strong creature is like really it. I like it here. Too. I think this is really important. So you save the spirit for an upper turn. Mm -hmm. It's also nice on a thing from below in this matchup, like not the best, but on a bot creeper. Like you have so much taunts that yeah, it's sure. fine on. Yeah, it comes perfectly. It's just a done. two mana five five then in a in the worst situation. No, well, it will be six eight, right? Because it yeah. aligns perfectly into the turn nine. That's like his threshold, and I think his turn eight might be a bit weak. By the way, I think Kara is <laughs> running out of steam now. <laughs> He's overloaded for nine, right? <laughs> it it's gonna be a little bit weak. Whereas normally the spot the shaman can deal with uh, the face shaman with one or two taunts, but when they just run out of removal, this is kind of happening here. I feel like because uh, Chucky doesn't even have a board. Ooh. Yeah, of course, the interesting turn. Interesting turn. <laughs> <laughs> Fast turn. Don't need a rope on this uh, one. Yeah. Uh, nice. There were reasons to rope. You had four yeah. targets, three on the minions and yeah, a face. I guess so. What about the Doomhammer anyways? I mean, it deals 16 damage, but you take 48 in the course of the action against the Bog Creeper. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I mean, this Bog Creeper is going to be essential spirited. And uh, it's going to be really hard to get through that one, too. Because yeah. Peace Point's out of cards. Card is just so good. You have so much health. You know? <laughs> Look at just this. through the taunts. <laughs> this is so sick. <laughs> it was so funny watching you, how excited you got every time <laughs> you did this. <laughs> one of the cards I'm still not sure about is the Ancestral Knowledge. Like, you need Kato in the deck, but the overload in the early game hurts you so much, right. I feel. 
and you don't want to like play in lava shock with it. Yes. Like you want to use it for the big overload. So I find it a really, uh, yeah, not a card you want. But I also completely card you don't agree, Tice. It's, it's unplayable on turn two because it just messes up all, everything. For I will you. always throw them over it. Yeah, exactly. And you, you don't even necessarily even want it early game. It's just... Oh, there we go. <laughs> the second phase. <laughs> oh, he's got the lightning storm. storm. Oh, oh my god. I would say it's like a decent draw. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Bock Creeper Fiesta. I'm telling you, man, this deck just keeps crushing. Saiyan made it, right? Just Saiyan? Or who was it? Uh, I mean, a lot of people actually tested it. Strifeco was testing a version of this, too. So who gave you a list? Uh, uh, Gara. So Gara. It was actually from Gara. It made, made by Gara. Hmm. Well, I don't think it was. I don't know if it was made by. I mean, Gara, his name is Gara Best Shaman. So. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> we are getting there. The troll. <laughs> brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Could not approve anymore. 2-0. <laughs> I mean, Chalky losing here would be quite unfortunate. I'm always sad when, like, North Americans travel so far away just to lose very f uh, early in the rounds, but that's the nature of competition, man. Got to stand the EO players. Yeah. That's true, too. Guard does play for Anubis. Oh, man, I'm kind of split. How's the stick against Dragon, uh, Dragon Warrior? It's uh, tricky. Uh, yeah. it's, be it's worse than it is against um, Shaman, so maybe uh, we'll mm -hmm. consider Chucky bringing this up early because Dragon Warrior is a, de a deck that is not overextending ever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's really hard to get the best Earth Elemental Destructions. Really often you do it against two minions. Yeah. And it's also... You get at a live total where they get like 9 nines. So you have, they have Rag, they have Grom, they have Finisher. They kind of have a little bit of a, against everything. And they even have an Execute, but this sometimes really strong. It might be actually pretty huge if you actually queued up the wrong decks. Like, it might actually just cost them the series. Yeah, like, this is not... This is a matchup that is super close, I yeah, would say. Yeah, I feel yeah. so as well, because you don't have as many minions on the board. Yeah, the, the most important cards in this matchup is, like, just the ability to answer their ones, like like Stormcrack for Frothings, mm -hmm. for example, or yeah. the 5-4s, or Element Destruction, uh, Lava Shock. And then, of course, as the, your Dragon Warrior does run out of resources eventually, because they don't really have good card draw mm -hmm. resource. So, hypothetically, the longer the game goes, you are favored, so you can drag that out. But um, mm -hmm. Dragon Warrior is very good at closing out the game if they ever get an early lead. So it's really scary. Uh, that's interesting. You really want to play as far side as Doomsayer. Mm. I mean, maybe he's just going for a turn for Doomsayer again and just clear everything. Mm, Ancestral Spirit is a really good card uh, against Warrior also. Like, if you can get it off, like, yeah. Warrior has no hex, no silence. So you know it's also always going to happen. And when you know this, then the card gets strong. If you know there might be an answer, you're always so scared of playing it. It's the beauty of the this control yeah. shaman deck, man. Oh, I'm so sad that I didn't bring it. Now. Like <laughs> you know I, was, so much, I was playing you it. You know so more much. than me about it, man, <laughs> in terms of all his in-depth nuance. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to play Bach Creeper. <laughs> didn't have the balls, sadly. <laughs> it's all good, dude. <laughs> all right, I, far sight. Still doesn't feel like the three three. The thing about it is that on the on the play, you don't really want to play Doomsayer because of the threat of Core Chronoly getting an easy trade. So, um, if they have the coin, it's really dangerous to play uh, Doomsayer in the face of a three attack minion. I mean, the Doomsayer seems uh, fine here. Probably, I think, like, it's a bit too high cost to cur uh, the, the hand of Gaura. Like, he can't really utilize these no um, the ancestors. It's but fine. you, you All can recall it. Elemental destruction. You can He's recall fine. it, right? Hmm? You can recall the, the Doomsayer. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking about it. I think it's fine, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm. The ancestral spirit. I mean, that's super strong, right? I mean, he buys yeah. two turns. And you also need to get, get it out of your hand, kind of. Like, I don't think you're going to be uh, use both on one minion. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I like it very I much. There's also no follow-up yet. Like, there is no turn five. So if you even have a turn five Doomsayer, I guess. Or you wait to turn six and do it twice on a Doomsayer. <laughs> Buy it yourself until nine turns. Yeah. <laughs> Seems legit. Can't argue with that. Uh, Ravaging Ghoul. I think he will be able to answer it. Yeah. To execute. I think Ravaging Ghoul. And Van the Shaman really falls behind. Wait, can he? Hold on. He just uh, Ravaging Ghoul. Um, execute and attack it twice. Ah, yeah. oh, right, 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 right. Execute first. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. That's proper sequence. Do you need to attack it twice? You only need to attack it once, right? Yeah. Berserk is already big enough. He gets yeah, seven attack. Uh, seven attack. Doom has six. Then he can just trade execute. Yeah. Yeah. Gets four extra attack, right? Four extra no, so it's not yeah. enough. Yeah. It's good. Not gonna be enough. Yeah, but you can trade like the totem to. Oh yeah, you can. Oh, okay, yeah. Then, yeah. then it's really clean if you make that extra trade. There you go. You get it for free, right? That so. is so strong now. 
Yeah. Well, I'm actually so curious. This is so important that he didn't queue up the Dragon Warrior before. Like, it actually... That's correct, yeah. That's, that's weird. It, 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 that's weird, It yeah. might be actually the most important part of the series. Like, it, it doesn't seem like it because, like, yeah, you queue up a deck and it seems very minor. But, yeah. um, like, looking from outside is, like, so important. I know he can play Lightning Storm with Lava Shock even, like, if something lives. Berserk, for example. Right. Just has a roll high on either uh, of those minions. <laughs> it's pretty likely. <laughs> Likely, yeah. If he, roll, if he kills there both, go. Oh, if he kills uh, both, then it's even better. <laughs> but it's also a super cool combination in this matchup. Sometimes, like Grom can be really painful, and then you faceless the Grom, you ancestral spirit it, and you trade it away, yeah. Yeah. and then you get a new Grom, like, and you trade another yeah. minion. Faceless like, is one of my favorite cards in this so deck. He gets a lot of stuff, even just hexing it, faceless hex, and then you just yeah. get so far it's ahead. Cool. Yeah, that's a really fancy play. What you just mentioned. <laughs> Super fancy. No, when you can just elemental destruction, oh. kill your own Gronoff and hit for 20. Mm. Very clean removal. It's gonna be a little bit awkward uh. to make this Stormcrack because you are not yeah, you're curving drop. into your book creep. But now you got a Lava Shock, so you might actually think about that. Oh, but Lava Shocking for one mana really hurts the deck. Like, you know how yeah. big overload you play? I don't think it matters too much here because the hand is pretty, like, you will get rid of these hand cards anyway, so yeah. the overload will not matter as much later on. Well, it's like that you have the option. I mean, he can still mm -hmm. draw, and yeah. if he doesn't draw, he can just play it. Yeah, yeah it's nice. No extra dragons here for Chucky, but it's kind of a problem for now. So you might just drop the throwing, develop the Warx. You know that there is no Harrison. Yeah, you need to get back on the board as fast as possible. Yeah, but coin Ragnaros. That Ragnaros might actually be uncontested, so... Well, are you sure? There's a face of manipulator. And an Ancestor Spirit. So you, so you have double <laughs> rack power. Uh, you don't have double rack, but yours don't yeah. die. And his will... No, where's the oh, next? There you go. Okay, right. his will also directly die. I think Gara just has the answer for everything here. That's pretty cool. Hmm. So... You feeling like playing the bot creeper? You already using execute. I mean, is it, it's better than passing your turn. Oh, pass, really? Hmm. Like, you don't want to hex that, right? No, no, but no. maybe Hex, Lava Hex Shock and, and Bok Reaper. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking about that. Yeah, I think that's good. Yeah, that's fine. And now we go to the rack, coin flip fiesta. I mean, there's a lot of ways for you know your opponent to remove it, but you just try to run a matter of resources and hopefully like a faceless ancestral spirit. And in the best case scenario, he doesn't remove it. You have an ability to ancestral spirit and faces. Oh, this isn't really. I am not really it's, yeah, certain it's on this rag because you know if it's not gonna work. Like there are so many punishments with hex, with spirit, with faceless. faceless. Well, yeah, also has all the three yes, bits three in, 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 in the hand. If he, if he takes Christ. the other route with like the guaranteed clear, yeah. I think he can just finish him off I next turn. I think it's really I like, important. I think this is a really important turn. Yeah. Like, I like this play a lot. I think it's really important to get the clean turn here to make sure you trade it away. I mean, you basically get some damage back before the trading, so this is fine. Yeah, Frothing's is really short. Even this extra dragon, that's also really yeah. nice for the pickup. Pretty sure probably the best one dragon to draw here because we are getting to a life total where you can put the shaman at 15. Mm, now he's actually forced to trade. As to hex it. Oh. That's not enough, so. Are you killed a frog? Yeah, now you still wish you had this lava shock. It's like. Mm, yeah, it's a bit do. awkward now. You yeah, do. but you wouldn't have played the bog creeper. And in the case where your opponent didn't remove it, your body. Right. And this is just the problem. Like every time there are two minions from the warrior, and at some moment when it gets to the mid game, you're at 20 lives, you're kind of forced to use these AoE effects in a not efficient way where you would like to get a bit more value. So, what could we do here? Hmm. Yeah, he wants to be overloaded when after he played all his stuff, right? Yeah, is, exactly. Is there any reasoning to be made to hexing Berserk? I mean, it looks uh, bad. You, it really looks bad, yeah. Like we, the opponent has Grom left, Drag. can also consider Faceless, Spirit, Hex, but uh, you, you lose so much. So you just Elemental Destruct here and pray, yeah? <laughs> or I mean, you could totem, so maybe you <laughs> roll the spell power and get a uh, six. Looks like he's going for the Faceless play. Okay. That's fine, I guess. X. I mean, Naya. Naya. Yeah, it's, uh, but I, I, I can't, I don't really think there's any uh, good play here. I think you maybe want to have the two bodies. Like the 9 9 after the hex was just played is maybe better on the right. So how problematic is this Berserk? Like, you don't really, it has such a contest, the Twilight Guardian, so well. 
kind of would like to do something against it. Also, well in mind to attack with the 3 6 first in a 1 1. I don't mm. think it's a problem if the Berserker. Do you like Rag this or turn, or do you like the two threats? I kind of like oh, Rag. One, one and a half. I like threat. Rag because if it hits the Berserker, it, you see an Hex being gone. It's really hard to kill like this. Uh, you know the Rag is most likely going to survive, I would say. You see him faceless gone, you see him hex gone. Hmm. I mean, 99 has a higher chance of survival rate and also a worse chance of backfiring if his opponent picked up a second faceless, too. Yeah, like, it's also kind of hmm. hard for Ooh. the shaman to get through the taunts. Like, elemental destruction kills your own minions, so it has to be lightning storm something. Yeah. Well, Harazil. That's the one way to stall the That's game. That's just gonna. It's really. Uh, the problem is, it does, still doesn't kill the 9 9. Yeah. But he can heal up back to 30. I mean, he's just not going to attack with the 1 1. Or maybe make the attack in the Guardian, but the Berserker can do that already, and you gain, gain quite some extra life. Yeah, he gets back to 30, but he takes 17 next turn, so <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, yeah but you don't, you, don't know there is a, you don't know there is a rack. I mean, there can also be in quite dead card, boot to Iker, for example. Yeah, but yeah. even with a dead card, I mean, you still take. Crap loads of damage. I agree. There are not many other <laughs> options that are appealing to me <laughs> than dying on boards, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I prefer not dying on boards. In the other route, you can take uh, a stroll, the, maybe the taunt <laughs> totem, spirit it, and stall another turn and bend mm. destruction of policy. <laughs> oh my goodness. Like, it's really sad. That is the, would be the craziest, but you have to gamble a lot. That so. would be two nuts. He's got to go and gain some life. Yeah, gain some nice life back. Wait, so. wait. Uh, pretty much all his life. Yeah. Wait, wait, what's this trait? Yeah, yeah, yeah because in case the, the Drake survives. And you go yeah. back to almost full life anyway. Yeah, you go for Or you even so go to full life. So, yes. Okay. So he hits it. Probably you take just immediately. His, I mean, <sighs> that's not good. Well, there was just okay. not, not much so. to do. If uh, Guardi uses Ancestral Knowledge. Mm. Mm. It's a taunt, so, so probably. Yeah. He needs uh, this to be able to... He needs Rag to hit that 0-2. That's basically the way he's going to win here. If he can Every win. Every turn, let, let Rag kill the mm. totem. Ooh. Oh, Karkin is... Uh, decent pickup can guarantee the Rag hit into the face now. Yeah, I yeah. think that's good. You want to play a Dragon or not? Probably not sure. I mean, why not? Like, yeah, I like the dragon because you can also clean up the totems. Yeah, man, Gar had a really insane opening and still is not able to really pull it out. Despite the bog creeper. Yeah, and despite the bog creeper. That is huge. It's just a super hard matchup that goes super to the grind. Okay, you know? this, this is very interesting. Now, I mean, but don't you have the feeling that, like. Gara could have done a little bit more. I don't. I, I don't know. It's some, <laughs> somehow it felt wrong. I, I don't know. Like I mean, not not a specific thing, but it just felt that Gara was ahead. Didn't you think that? Like, yeah, it felt I, like it. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're asking if he played perfectly, and I can't say he did. No, no, no. Just just wondering, like, where the game completely switched over from. Well, like, there, a were very good there were never good moments for uh, Gara to clear. Like there was never an elemental destruction that both killed two minions. Yeah, guaranteed. Yeah. 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 So but and that's the power of the deck. Like if this shaman cannot play his power of the deck, that's really problematic. I, think I mean, really, it was just a doomsayer that. Yeah, it came off. down to. Oh the, my to god! The yeah, that was one. such a big swing. Oh, never lucky. Rack knows what to do. Rack. I mean, if the, the Rack does hit the totem here, it's actually pretty huge. If he was able, like, but Rack knows the way. <laughs> Rack knows the face. Right. Yeah. Yes. Oh. So it takes it down with the dragon. I mean, warrior. come on! How, how, if you're not gonna sweep oh. the series with it, you guys at least won two games. Like, it's now good. You get the it's one now. So. Oh, now it lost a game. Yeah, I know. I, it, it wasn't, wasn't me. It, it wasn't, it wasn't you. <laughs> I mean, that's still a really good win rate. <laughs> no, oh, eighty-eight uh. percent win rate. We'll take it. Good so take. he's got uh, druid remaining, uh, his ramp druid, and he's got, I believe, the zoo warlock remaining. Um, Zoo kind of gets punished a lot by the Dragon Warrior, yes. so I guess he's going to go with Druid. Yeah, maybe you want to still get some more information out of the deck, but it okay. looks uh, pretty straightforward. That's um, fair. Is the Zoo getting so punished by Dragon Warrior? I feel like the, our, our Warrior archetypes are way worse for Zoo. They can also... 
Might just put it out there. I don't know, man. These are three culprits right here. If he just picks up a dragon, that makes it difficult. Yeah, and also like this dragon warrior, like <laughs> I, just I will, I will probably, I will probably <laughs> keep the wall. Hand. This is too sick. Yeah, this I actually really sick. like this from Chucky to just keep the wall hand. Like Ghoul is an. Yeah, you like, like the hand? I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Amateur, it's, really, it's really problematic if you don't have the way to deal with the like deal the one AOE damage. It get, can get really problematic. Yeah. I would even argue that Ghoul is one of the strong, like yeah. the strongest card probably yeah. against Zoo. Thanks yeah, so. by far. Yeah. But, yeah. Some other decks have like access to kind of similar stuff, like an OTK has like the Pyro and uh, uh, and uh, Temple yeah, Warrior yeah. has a Wind Effect. So then Goo Keep gets a bit clunky sometimes, but in this deck, it really, really is important because it's your only tool. I'm like, Ravage Ghoul and its power level just makes me curious how it is in Wild to play Ravage Ghoul, Death Spite, and just have like just this amazing <laughs> amount of ways to just non-stop clear the board. And then like, at what threshold do you're like, Oh my god, I have too many whirlwinds. Maybe I only play one Ravaging Ghoul, despite it being like an auto include in every deck in Warrior that is. It's crazy to me. Uh, so I mean Death Bite is also kind of decent. So yeah, <laughs> some would say it's a pretty yeah. good curve. Oh yeah. <laughs> so does yeah. Uh, Probably yeah, attack phase there, right? I mean the <laughs> attack and a defined yeah. shield is not really appealing. It's kind of weird. So you don't do you want to PO that down? I mean, you don't want to play Void Walker into it, that's for sure. Yeah, this is where Possessed, Possessed Villager is just really good. A lot of people compare Possessed Villager to Art Squire and say it's the same, but it's really not, in my opinion. Power of because Overwhelming. Because Power of the Power yeah, it's of the Power of the Power Councilman, Knife Juggler. Um, yeah. The it, only thing that Arg I think is better with the Squire is like Argus. Yeah, it is the one that buffs the. There's so much upside to that Possessed Villager. Which one with, with Argus, you say? The yeah, kind of that's the only better, thing yeah, that okay. I can think of Squire being better for. Okay. Mm. Yeah, it's easy. The Gengos is just good here. Early game curves. That's where that... It helps uh, also a bit against the Whirlwind Effect. Just spawns you more imps. That's pretty nice. That's true. Uh, Ravage Ghoul is still pretty good against most of that stuff. Yeah, you really have to like use it at the right spot. Like The card is so valuable for you in this matchup. It's true. So I see like maybe Blood 2 I Ooh, into... that's really a uh, help, uh, helpful it... draw. With, together with yeah. the Ghoul, it's just an almost clean kill. There will only be the new 1-1 one -one spam. From the Imp Gang boss. I feel like the Iker is a really key draw here, yeah. Like, you can, can just almost clear the board. Mm -hmm. Like, it's only the Argent Squire left, yeah. right? Yeah, the 1 1 and from the Argent Squire. You or you can do it this way, yeah. Yeah, and you have a 2 1 and a 3 3 on board. It's pretty good. Like, the, also, the other options are just not really appealing with the Twilight Guardian not be even being buffed. Yeah, I agree. Getting traded away. That was a really good goal. Yeah, it's a bit unfortunate that it can directly trade into the Iker, but that also means that it won't trade with a small buff into the Ghoul, so you are, you are almost sure the Ghoul will survive this turn. Yeah, so now I got initiative on the board, which is always pretty key against Zoo. Yeah, if a Zoo has to play from behind, uh, things are getting way more uh, harder for Zoo now. No I implosion anymore or any swing card that they, ha that, well, that they had before. Yeah, like it's a big miss for the Zoo to <laughs> get back on the board. Now they have to go for an Knife juggler with forbidden ritual or something. Oh, that's interesting. So it's also kind of a big deal that this dude is only two five and not three five. Yeah. So that's actually interesting. Do you just slam it or play the cork run? Slam is good, right? You can also draw something. Yeah. I actually really like the cork in here because you get the double trade. The squire finds value. You but you want to? The, the squire will with a. Oh, you want to trade the squire? No, I want to trade into the consumer with both. Mm. But that's expensive, right? Yeah, when, a, when a juggler comes out and has a lot of fun. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you might be, yeah, if there is no juggler, yes. Your tentacles alone. Tentacles alone are also very bad for that player. Yeah, that's true. But now there is a risk if you don't draw anything, you are just gone on board. Yeah, but you also drew one more card. That's true. But I find it really important to be on board now uh, still. I mean, the difference is... Uh, oh, he even executes. I think this... It's interesting. Hmm. Might be wrong. It might be wrong. Is it? Yeah, because if a Doom card comes out I here. would also make this trade in the Squire. I don't want to get punished by Abusive or any Knife Juggler. Yeah, 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 and you also already saw CJ and there was another game. No, that was... I mean, you can't play Giant here anyways, but... Yeah. Chuck, Chuck is playing CJ, isn't he? Uh, yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah. So you also need to execute for that one for sure. I mean, uh, I don't know if Gara runs the Siege. Ooh. Um, ah, this councilman has really to go down at some point. Yeah, you're like you're like back in the same exact spot as last turn. <laughs> <laughs> 
Do you want to kill this dark jar, Council? Yeah. It's just still the fight for the board. It's so important. Mm. Picking up that dragon, though, is nice. Yeah, it's sweet. And now he's probably f uh, asking Yeah, but if there is something bad to play into in console it's Twilight Guardian. Like, it gets to a point where the, by just playing minions, it gets traded away. And it's I like this because it contests health wise the console man, so it at least dies hey. if it trades. Like, if you play the Guardian, it just makes it big and trades in. It's a pretty difficult turn here to... Like, how much is the tap still worth? Because now you get to a point where you want to have also guards during the game. Yeah. But I do think that the taunting mm -hmm. these smaller things yeah. presents such a logistical nightmare for a warrior to get through. Mm -hmm. One Ravage goal has been used. Yeah, like I said, it's not as bad for you, Sue. Did you just say logistic nightmare? <laughs> That's very nice. It's kind of funny, yeah? That's right, man. I've, tr I've tried to throw in parties before. It's so hard. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. What, what, what prevents you from making the easy trade? I guess a second uh. Iker. Hmm. It's like what I'm thinking of. I don't see anything besides an Iker. Maybe a little bit slam. Yeah. Yeah, that's true too. Mm, it executes, so it's not. Oh. Can't really proc it, huh? No, these little taunts are. Uh, so annoying. Really annoying. And Darkshire Councilman is getting stronger and stronger. He's powering yeah. up. That card is so scary. It's like that scene in the movie yeah. when, like, the egg just keeps growing stronger. That's, like, going to born the evil villain, and there's nothing you can do to get past the defenses. It's just inevitably going to hit you for eight damage or more. How, how powerful do you think this Dark Shark Captain will get, man? It's at least five attack right now. Uh, like nine? Yeah, well... Just gets Forbidden Ridge on next turn, just slams him. In two th if it stays on uh, in, for two turns, it's just going to kill it. What so. was the biggest councilman you've seen? 13 damage. 13, that's a yeah. lot. I know because uh, he played for, like, it was late game. He played Forbidden Ritual with six. It was one to seven. And I cleared it with Ravagal, but I couldn't kill it. And he played another Forbidden <laughs> Ritual off the top. And, oh. and I just will never forget that moment. Insta call, like, oh, God. A 13 damage Darkshire Councilman. It was so traumatic that Life Coach even left the couch for it. <laughs> or it was the story. <laughs> uh, Life Coach just stepped away for a brief second. Right. Oh, oh wow. wow! That's actually pretty big here. Yeah, Doomguard the from the top. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually pretty big here. <laughs> that Doomguard. Good. Damn good. That's pretty good. Yeah, I like it as well. Good trade too, so he doesn't have to lose uh, the council. So council. how important are these trades now? Like the one one is like, of course, really good in the format, but this um, mm. the dragon. Are we gonna trade with the Doomguard into it? Like it's the value trade, defending still the consumer that already was a problem for. Two turns in a row now. Yeah, I mean, the only th what can you do on turn eight, really? It's Ragnaros and Grom are the two big things. So if a Dragon mm -hmm. Warrior picks up a Ghoul here, it's actually super big. It's insane, yeah? Yeah. That's uh, not good enough. Uh, <sighs> oh, if it could split the three damage, maybe. And then execute or what? Uh. <laughs> That's not really appealing. I mean, this Rag will just kill this council, man. Problem with Rag. Oh, you have that much faith? The problem with Rag is I mean, e even if it kills it. Yeah, it's true. I mean, he has not to like aim so hard. That's what you think, man. But uh, <laughs> the problem with Rag just against Zoo is like even if it kills the consummate, the zoo is gonna play two, three minions again, and Rag is just feels so awkward. Like yeah, it's even true. if it stays. So I'm like Rag. Yeah. If I don't get him really, really good Rag, I just don't want to play it against Zoo. So here we'll I want to go for all the other options except Rag. And what about um, here? Execute on the Doom Guard and just yeah, and yeah. then kill a two free. Do you think that's yeah. better than killing the 6-5? That's yeah? probably best. Uh, the dragon... Nah, you want to keep the taunt so you can recover at least. Yeah, I think this is better, like... This is good. It's I mean, more clean. I mean, now he has like a 6-5, it should probably grow to 8-5. And that's better oh. than 5-1 and 2-3, or what? That taunt minion, though. Bad taunt minion is mm -hmm. coming up. I'm not sure, because 5-1 and 2-3 can be handled by a ghoul, maybe, but uh, yeah, it's, it's close. And this contest is also really nice, like 5-4 into 6-5. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, five, but yeah, you. But usually yeah. you assume that it won't live, and in this case it's like nine. So man, this councilman had a good trip on this board. Just saying that Dude, in this case it was two yeah. more damage, mm -hmm. two more damage, and probably the nine five is better than the five one and the two three. So he gets the dragon, so okay. maybe mm -hmm. one more. T I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those games where you just gotta put your faith in Rag, but you have to also just not die to the other damage existing. Oh, oh and that's 
just gonna wrap it up. Hit there. How many turns was this councilman on the board? Yeah, Five it was turns, it was really long on the board. Hey, twelve damage. You got pretty yeah. high. And if he tapped, it would have gotten thirteen. He, would have he was really wow. swinging that council hammer, huh? Yeah, three drop that turns to a twelve five is uh, pretty decent. do a pretty decent uh, three drop I would say and does a lot here in the match. Gar stays alive in the tournament mm -hmm. and uh, sends Chucky packing, but uh, the story of the series wasn't that last game. It was whether or not that Bug Creeper Shaman is legit. I want to talk to Gar about it. Yeah. I saw uh, yeah, I saw Burst mm -hmm. hey, It's pretty good so far. Yeah, definitely Shaman doing work for Tempo Storm there. Yeah, so good job, Gar. I make some things. Oh, oh like I, I this. thought I would play Can immediately, so I didn't mm -hmm. expect this interview at all. Um, I'm feeling good. Um, I'm still like. You're still like in the zone? Like in the zone for yeah, the next yeah, match. Yeah, yeah. It's one more to go. It's like nothing yet, so. All right. Mm -hmm. We can keep it kind of short then. Um, what, what, what led you to ban Sha uh, not, not Sha the Freeze Mage from. The Shaki. Freeze Mage? Um, it's just pretty good against my whole lineup. Like I have a control lineup and plus two, and the Freeze Mage could potentially sweep me. So, yeah, so I had to ban it, basically. Okay. Nice. Mm -hmm. Do you like the Shaman deck? Huh? Do you like oh, the Shaman the deck? Oh, the Champ, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I was like, Bok every yeah. time I played it, I, I, it reminded me of the Bok I, I was telling the story of how you were thinking about bringing Priest, and we played, like, 20 games of Priest, and you just lost every single one of them. Yeah. <laughs> just, was pretty it's pretty sick. <laughs> yeah, like, very All right, good well, just, I didn't know you were bringing that Shaman list, too. It was pretty cool. Pretty cool. All right. Uh, do you guys have any questions for Gar? No, I just, uh, just see good to see this uh, control shaman doing so much work. Like just a great uh, deck against the aggressive. And um, were you surprised that he queued up the the first with the the shaman afterwards and then picked the dragon warrior? Because I find that a way more uh, difficult matchup. Yeah, yeah. I I, fo I thought the same actually. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that like he had three bad decks against uh, against it, but I think the warrior was. Had the best shot, as mm -hmm. you can see, he also yeah. beat me with the warrior. So I was very lucky to get like two free wins, basically. Free wins. <laughs> 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 it, it does feel a little bit free, yeah. man. It's not even close when yeah. it wins. We no, were it watching. Was, it was very we were already watching. Right? Yeah, we were like, already yeah. watching. Or we were already watching the match against Zoo, and it was just so straightforward. Like yeah. the deck just beating another Zoo, like uh, super awesome. That seems it, very uh, funny to to <laughs> just something like five ancestral you know? spirit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> seems really funny. How do you feel? Your chance at your next opponent. Uh, I think, honestly, when I watched all decks. the matches, I think this is the worst opponent for me in this whole tournament. He plays a very, very greedy lineup, and I'm that's like four percent. I don't expect anyone to bring like an all control lineup, so so I'm not targeting that. So I think he's yeah he has his favorites for sure in the matchup. So we'll see how it goes. Good luck, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good luck. Good luck. Thank all right. You. All right, well, I'll uh, send you off because I think, uh, you know, he has to play almost immediately, which brings us to our next break. Uh, we're going to try to go straight into the decider match for Group E, so don't go anywhere. More C-Story Cup coming right after this.